This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Medveden. This map can be found over at Facebook and there will be a link down in the description below. But before that, this video is brought to you by Freddy DB. Thank you for being a farm baron. So as I mentioned, this can be found over at Facebook. You do not need a Facebook account in order to get to this page and download the map. So don't let that hold you back. I'll also say that I'm going to put all of the description or the Facebook post in the description below, minus the link and minus the password. That is because I'm not sure what language this Facebook page is written in, but I use Google Translate to translate it to English as best Google Translate could do. And if you read the description, it's it's a little comical as to what Google Translate has said. But at any rate, when you go to the Facebook page, it will be very obvious what a download link looks like. In all languages, download links are the same. And the password is directly below that. I'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to figure out what the password is. And then when you click on that link, it's gonna take you to a page where you have a text entry box. You put the password in, you click the button below it, and it's going to download the map. Pretty straightforward. I use Google Translate on Chrome. It's a plugin. I highly suggest people get Google Chrome and use the Google Translate plugin on Chrome, especially when looking for farm sim stuff, because farm sim is a global game. Modders, mappers, all over the world. So you're going to run across pages that are not written in whatever language, English, German, whatever language is native to you. You're going to run across pages that are not written in that. And Google Translate is going to help out substantially. So let's just go ahead and load on in. As we load in, I'll go ahead and read a little bit of the description. Welcome to Medveden Map. The map is built only on my imagination and transferred from FS19. Thank you for the opportunity to use the objects from Happy Mole. The map does not support AI worker yet. Unable to go anywhere. Please don't take this as a mistake. It's in development for now. The map has decorative trees on the edges. The map offers two empty areas for farm construction. And this is where it starts to get funny. 42 cops. The eighth bow. 10 cell points. 11 manufacturing buildings. A nap. Three boys. One village. And... In the new player mode, you'll get a farm built with a machine. Have fun. <laughs> so like I said, Google Translate can sometimes be an absolute hoot. But let me break that down for you a little bit. So a nap. It has a sleep trigger. Three boys. I'm not sure. One village is obvious what's going on. 42, I think it means 42 fields. Okay. In Farm Manager, start from scratch. The main farm is empty. There's no buildings. There's no equipment whatsoever. The only thing that exists is a fence, and you can indeed delete the fence. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. You can see that this is not quite a full-size map. There's a little section here cut off, a little section down here cut off, but it is a fairly decent-sized map. We have all of the crop types available to us here on Farm Sim 22. And if we look at the lands area, you'll see we start out on new farmer mode by owning the main farm and field 21 for $97,000. Overall, this area is about 20 acres in size. If we take a look at some of these other fields, like field 40, it is 22.2 .2 acres in size, $541,000. Field 12 is eight and a half acres, $208,000. Field one is 7.28 acres, $176,000. There isn't a biogas plant on the map. There are, in fact, 11 production points built into the map, and we're going to talk about those here in a little bit. If we take a look at our crop counter, we have the standard in-game crop counter available to us here on Medveden. If we take a look at our prices screen, you're going to find that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of the base game crops available to us here in FS19 on this map, including sugar beet and sugar beet cut. 
We also have the ability to buy seed. We can sell eggs, wool, and milk. We can also sell our wood chips, silage, hay, straw, and grass. We have the ability to buy diesel, as well as all of the production elements that are standard in the base game. So something that I really didn't think would be that, that difficult to achieve, this is one of the first maps where we're actually able to sell everything that we could possibly produce here on Farm Sim 22. We do have a bulk line point, and we also have a stone crusher. So congratulations on the map author for Med Veden because you have managed to score a full point on what I would have thought would be a fairly easy thing to accomplish. But so far, so many of the maps that we have looked at have failed at being able to do that very thing. We do have quite a decent list of starting equipment. It's all new and none of it is leased. We have four animal areas at the starting farm. None of them have any animals in them and we do have contracts available. As I said, there are 11 production points on the map. We do not own any of them at the start. Wowzers, let's go ahead and move on to our starting equipment. Drum roll, please. All right, we start out with the Fent 724 Vario and a John Deere 7810 tractor. We move on to the John Deere, or sorry, the New Holland CH 7.70 Harvester. That is paired up with the Verify 28-foot grain header. Then we have the Rudolph DK280RL dolly trailer. We have the Kuvlin Echo Mat Plow. We have the Lempkin Simar, yeah, Simar, yeah, 9 slash 500K cultivator. As far as cedars go, we have the Terrasim CFC6F cedar. We have the Hardy Mega 1200L sprayer. We have the Breed Isle K105 solid fertilizer and lime spreader, as well as the Amazon ZATS3200 solid fertilized spreader. We have the Inbrock 900 pneumatic star weeder. We have the Kuhn GMT 4411 side mower and GMT 3123F front mower. We have the GF 8712 header paired up with the Semez Z2840H wind rower, the Zelon CFS 2501DO forage wagon. We have a header trailer for our grain header. And we have a pair of weights to round out all of the starting equipment. As I said, the starting equipment is not owned in Farm Manager or Start From Scratch. We only have it here in New Farmer Mode. So since we are not at the main farm, let's go ahead and do a little bit of a tour here of the main shop. We have our customized repair cell and trade trigger right here. And then we have the main shop icon right over here. I'm just going to go ahead and purchase the Mahindra. We're going to make use of that here in a little bit. See where that spawns in at. We have quite the area here for new vehicles and equipment to spawn in at. And a decent exit. Let's see, do these... These hedges do not have collisions on them, so we've got a pretty good exit width here. I think we're going to be more held up by the roadside power poles and trees than anything else because they indeed have collisions on them. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up for the fly around. We're going to fly around the map and then we're going to land over at the main farm. Where we're going to do a little bit of a farm tour. We're going to talk about that. Then we're going to jump back over here to our Mahindra and conclude the map tour with a drive around. All right, so one of the first things we're going to notice, and we are obviously way up higher than you would ever be when you are in a tractor or in a vehicle without flight mode enabled. The map border is a little... It could be a little bit better in some areas as opposed to others. But then again, we are much, much higher than one would ever be with respect to just using the third person camera on a vehicle. So I'm not super concerned about that because we are a bit exaggerated 
in our overall height. The main farm is just over the rise over there on the other side of that tree line. If I get high enough, we'll probably be able to see a little bit of it. So we can see a little bit of the main farm way off in the distance up there. That is where we're going to conclude our fly around. We have the main town directly in front of us. And then a large bulk of the production area and everything is going to be also in that general vicinity. Let's go ahead and pull up the main PDA. So we have our shop down here. Let's go ahead and curve on around. Overall, the field layouts are fairly flat toward the southern part of the map starts to get a little bit of more of a rise there in the middle, and then it's going to tail off more towards the north part of the map. The biggest bulk of our production cell points and everything is going to be down here between fields 18 and 34 and just south of field 7. We have our grape processing facility. Then moving into the industrial area, if you will, where we have several cell points. We have our bakery. We have our tailors. Oops. We have... Uh, I don't know what this is. We'll have to see. This looks like it's just a restaurant. You know, we have just a restaurant there. Let's say we have a bakery. We have our grocery store. We have our farmer's market. Here we have the... Pizzeria. Cell point. We have our animal dealer. We have the ability to purchase. We can buy manure. We can buy slurry from here. Here's where we're going to sell our silage, hay straw, and grass bales. We have a cell point located right there. Then we have our stone crusher. We have our biomass heating area. Then we have the ability to buy, to purchase. We can buy bulk liquid fertilizer. Here we have our spinnery cell point, our wool cell point. We have our bulk line buy point. We have our mineral feed buy point. Here we can buy seed. And then we have our sugar mill located right there. We make our way on down the road. We'll have another lump of manufacturing with our oil factory. Then we have our cereal factory. We have our dairy, carpentry, and our mill. Now, there's a few... 2D trees. We're looking one at one right now that just is constantly rotating to be facing in a general direction. I really wish these were swapped out with real trees as opposed to being the these odd 2D trees, especially when we're talking about being so, so close to areas that we are going to be driving. We've got a couple more of them here. They're really obvious when you get up close to them because, well, they rotate in order to keep their, I guess, best face forward. These trees would be fine, kind of being buried back along the tree map edge. But right here, right up where you're selling things, not so much. Now, that really isn't a map rating category, and that's why that has not affected this map's rating. But from a, just an overall design and player immersion standpoint, I really would like to see in an update those swapped out. As we saw, the poles that are in the middle of the fields do indeed have collisions, so you will need to 
kind of drive around those or hired help is going to have to avoid those. We've got a cell point here. This is simply a decorative train. There isn't a train that actually comes through here because the train line is pretty short. We've got the tunnel there and then it's going to make a turn here and then there's another tunnel right there that is then going to exit the map. We're going to go ahead and take our main drive. This is our main driveway for our farm. We're just going to go ahead and follow this on up and then we're going to do our main farm tour. Nice little little creek running alongside our drive here. And then it gets to this point where it's been kind of washed out. Let's say we had a big rain or something and just water just ran down through here area. Kind of an interesting design element. And here we are at the main farm. Now, everything here at the main farm can be sold. Everything you see other than the trees are sellable. So we have our main farmhouse right here. And something that I need to look at. I did not check this earlier. There are collectibles. So this map does have the Holt Bailaroon collectibles because there are 20 collectibles scattered around the map. So we do have collectibles. And if we go into build mode, I want to demonstrate we can indeed go to demolish. We can indeed get rid of all of these fences and all of the buildings, should we so wish. So it's not that big of a deal. Just like that whole fence line, it can just go away. We do have a water fill point here. We have one of the big, large, easy sheds. We have our Una base game silo. We have our dump and fill pipe right there. Here we have the base game sheep area. So we have our food spawn point. We have our, sorry, this is for the horses. So we have a horse area there. We have a horse purchase point. We have a food point there. In-game sheds, skin to this tan color. We have our base game chicken coop. We have our manure heap for our cow area. Then we have our cows themselves. We have our slurry point. Of course, we have our food trough. And I really should go back here and buy one of each. That's what we typically do. So 14 horses right there. Three hundred and sixty chickens, so one chicken almost for every day of the week or every day of the year. We have our animal trigger right here, eighty cows. Our milk point. We have our slurry tank. And we have our big pig area with its own manure heap. This is the base game of pig area. 270 pigs in this particular area. We have a silage bunker for our cows located right there. And then we have the last easy shed, not really easy shed, but the, the Herman sheds again skinned to this tan color. And that is the main farm tour. So as I said, you can indeed 
sell everything here on the main farm. And if you load this map up on Farm Manager or start from scratch, none of these buildings are here. The only thing that is here is the grass, the gravel, the trees, and the fence. And as we have demonstrated, we can sell the fence without any issue whatsoever. So I'm just going to go ahead at this point and jump back to the shop. And that's where we're going to start our drive around. So while we are driving to the first parts of the town here, I want to go through some of the things that we've already talked about. We have 11 built-in production points on this map. They are the sawmill, great processing facility, the bakery, the tailor, the spinnery, the sugar mill, oil mill, cereal factory, the dairy, carpentry, and grain mill. So there is no BGA. That is probably one of the only base game production elements that is not already pre-placed on this map. So the map is going to get a full point for including production built in or have areas set aside for such because you can't tell me that we really really don't have production built in when we have 11 of I think the 12 base game possible production elements built into the map. We've already talked about how this map includes all of the base game props animal outputs and production elements as sellable so this map gets a full point in that regard also this is our great processing facility it's the base game processing facility never changes here we have our dump station we have our pallet spawn point and our interactive icon we're just going to drive up this road here because we have our spinnery and our fuel station all the way up here to the north side of the map so i want to just go ahead and drive on up there and while we're driving we can just take a look at how the land lays we can at this point really see the map edge from more of a realistic angle it doesn't look all that bad from this particular angle which is fine can the farms be customized yes indeed farms are fully customizable in new farmer mode and in farm manager start from scratch there isn't a farm including no farm machinery so that is a full point also with regard to buildings where appropriate using the new texture technique as well as ground textures. Ground textures for sure. It's using, you know, base game ground textures, nothing really out of the ordinary there. And overall, we are using FS22 buildings in pretty much every area. I did struggle with a few buildings really assessing if they were using the new technique or not. They were a little difficult to decipher, but in the end, I'm giving this map a full point on this one. And this might be one of the first maps to get a full point on this particular rating criteria. It was a little bit of a struggle. I wasn't quite sure, and I almost gave it just three quarters of a point. But the fact was, I really wasn't 100% confident that the buildings were not using the new technique. Or if they weren't, they were pretty darn good looking textures to begin with. So, with that degree, they weren't taking away from the map experience. So, I gave it a full point. Here we have our spinnery. So, we have our dump point for that. We have our interactive icon. Right there. I guess I have to say I'm not really sure where the pallets are going to spawn at. So, player and interactive trigger areas clearly marked. That's going to be that's going to be the one spot that I think we're going to have to possibly take 
a little bit of a point off on. I said I didn't see the markers for the spinnery. We're going to come down here. I'm pretty sure I saw markers for pretty much most everything else. I'm going to zoom all the way out as far as I can. And again, if we take a look kind of at the map edge in driving. It doesn't look all that bad. Holes are so annoying. It'll be a fun day when we finally have no player collision or something that is similar that prevents the camera from zooming in and out like that. Overall, I think this map is very, very aesthetically pleasing. I think it has a lot of gameplay elements going for it. Like I said, we've got our base game raisin area here, so we have our spawn point and everything clearly indicated. Then we have the base game bakery. And our interactive icon around front. Our spawn point and our dump point clearly marked. We have our restaurant cell point clearly marked here. As far as getting in and out, I wouldn't suggest any uh, super long vehicles, but it shouldn't be too terrible hard to get in and out of that facility. We have our tailor here, nicely decorated. With a guy just hanging around, just standing there. Hey buddy, you waiting on somebody. You waiting on somebody in particular? So we have our dump point, we have our interactive icon, and then we have our wardrobe trigger. And around back, we have our spawn point for our pallets of clothing. Again, not too terrible hard getting around here, but I wouldn't want to do it with a super long trailer. Really well decorated. Lots of uh, lots of decorative bits here and there. Not a lot of areas just kind of just kind of left barren. So we have our stone crusher. We have our heating plant. So we have our dump point, our log cell trigger right there. And like I said, here we can buy fertilizer. In fact, let's just go ahead and pull up the PDA and I'll show you what we have going on here. So here we have the ability to buy sprayers, liquid fertilizer. We can buy seed, we can buy minerals, and we can buy lime at those locations. Down here at our animal dealer, we have the ability to buy manure and to purchase slurry. There's our bulk mine point. Then we have the Glenwood Sugar Mill, base game sugar mill. So we have our interactive icon, our spawn point for our sugar pallets. Then we have our dump point around back. Our buy mineral feed. dump point and trigger for this particular cell point. Watch out traffic cones, here I come. Side of here we have our bale silage straw cell point. As I mentioned, we have the ability to buy manure located right here and the ability to buy slurry located right there. And then we have our animal dealer located right here. So 
head on down. We don't have too much more to take a look at here on this particular map. We have four or five production and sell points located down here in this cluster. And then one more a little bit further down. So we have the oil mill, base game oil mill. So we have our spawn point, our dump point, and our interactive point right there. We have our cereal factory. And it's base game cereal factory, so nothing super, super going on there. Interactive icon, our dump station, and our pallets are going to spawn huh, somewhere. I don't see the marker for those. We have our grain mill, so we have our pallet spawn point dump point in our interactive icon we have the carpentry so we have our dump point our cell wood icon our spawn point for our furniture and our interactive icon we have base game dairy again with our dump point our spawn point for our pallets back there and the interactive icon is here up front Move on down here to our final point of interest, which is the grain sub point down here at the railroad tracks. So overall, the last grading criteria of interactive icons and player areas clearly marked. Not so much. We're missing the spawn point markers for the spinnery and for the cereal mill. So I'm going to have to say that we're going to have to give this a probably a three quarters of a point on that as far as missing the interactive icons on two production areas. So overall, this map is going to get a score of 4.75, which is pretty darn good, quite frankly. And I think this might be one of the highest scoring maps to date with respect to with respect to that. So just to summarize one more time, with 11 production elements built in, this map is getting a full point with regard to built-in production areas or areas set aside for such. The map does have the ability to sell all the base game crops, all the base game production elements, and all of the animal outputs. So we're gonna get a full point on that regard. The starting farm over here can indeed be customized in new farmer mode. And the fact that you can sell everything or anything in specific that you want to get rid of in farm manager or start from scratch. The whole area here is completely void other than some fencing, fencing which you can also sell. Buildings where appropriate are using the new texture technique. Yes, most of these buildings have come from FS22, if not all the buildings have come from FS22. I think some of them may have come from Erlengrot, which isn't necessarily using the new texture technique as best as I can tell, but overall the textures look so well that being able to tell which building is using what is quite difficult, so we didn't really mess with that too terribly much. I'm going to give it a full point there. And player interactive areas, we're going to give it 0.75 so like I said, 4.75 points on that regard. And then the sawmill is located right here. That one is a little bit out of the way. We're going to see that located right there. And everything is clearly marked with that one. We have our wood chip area. We have our cell point for our logs, our interactive icon to sell the wood. We have our interactive icon to interact with and buy the production facility. And then we have our spawn point for our planks right there. So guys, let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of Medveden? I think it's a pretty darn good map, and I think it would make a really great single-player map, for sure. The fact that it has 45 fields, 46, 47 fields, sorry. No, 50. 
Every time I give you a number, I see a bigger number. The map has 50 fields, lots of production elements built in. I think this would make a really fun single player map for sure. Got decent areas for forestry if you want to get into that. Also, not sure how well it'll work in multiplayer given the fact that it's just got one common farm. But overall, it's a pretty darn good European map, in my opinion. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you agree or do you disagree? Either way, happy farming.